This is CBS. When they want cartoons but you can't afford the time or cost to make them for the poor of the TV junkies, young girls and boys who need their air filled with tween ads for toys by the failed screenwriter. Do some of the shrooms can ascend design them high on the news by your costume maker. the very first episode of the Saturday Morning Dinah Show, uh, where we dig up the weirdest and wackiest live-action kids shows of the 1970s and see if they're insane as we remember. Uh, it's very exciting. This is our pilot episode. There's so much to do. There's so much to cover. Let's start by going around the horn, meeting the Dinah Squad, and finding out what everybody is drinking on this fine, hot summer day. Let's Start by going to North Carolina and film archivist, the 16 millimeter savior, Mr. Skip Elsheimer of AV Geeks. What do you got, Skip? Uh, today I am drinking a Big Red, which is mm. a, it's basically diabetes in a, in a jug. Um, it is <laughs> hey. bubblegum flavored caffeinated soda. <laughs> bubblegum flavored. Yeah, and it's not cinnamon flavor. It's not like Big Red gum. Not, not this Big is, Red. Straight up bubblegum flavored. Like, oh, I guess yeah. Fago Red is another version of that. But they make a thing called is, Red Pop. Yeah. Yeah, this is disgusting. Oh, boy. And uh, from Oakland, California, artist, animator, puppeteer, the ghetto Geppetto, Mr. Roy Miles. What you drinking? And it's cotton candy flavor. Uh, swill. I don't know if it, I, I think it's supposed to, let's see what it tastes like. I haven't had this before. Cotton You're breaking candy. up some Roy. It's like Windex. It's breaking up a little, but it is it is cotton candy flavored Fago. I'm being told Ugh. by reliable All right. sources. All right. I'm gonna I'll see your no, 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 no. <laughs> Isn't cotton candy flavor like sugar and burnt? Aren't those the two flavors <laughs> that make cotton candy flavor? This tastes like the inside of a carney's mouth after a really bad day. <laughs> like, this is not good. Okay, All right, I'm uh, going to do it, too. No re recommend. Hmm. That's good. Your review, Skip. Yeah, it's uh, it's like it's it's like that super hard bubble gum, but it's all liquid. OK, it's kind of gross. Yeah, that's good. Well, I can't believe I'm the healthiest out of all of us because I let me get me up here for coming into your from Brooklyn, New York, the host of the Bastard Tapes podcast by the Found Footage Festival. I'm having a uh, festive Fresca, the sugar free drink, because it always reminds me of the 70s. And I wanted a good 70s nostalgia mood with reusable ice cubes for color, a metal straw for the sea turtles and uh, this umbrella just to celebrate a brand new show. Uh, it's very found festive. footage festival family. Excellent. A uh, fresca is great—a grapefruit flavored soda. I think the uh, the complete flavor blend is grapefruit and lime. Uh, but yeah, it's, so they don't advertise mix. it because like it sounds. Uh, that is, I will. I endorse that. Well, you know, it was a favorite. I also of, have a backup. Uh, I was born during the Lyndon Johnson administration, and Fresco was one of his favorites. He had a Fresca button in the Oval Office, if you can believe it. Um, but there's one one more thing that I like about Fresca is uh, I prepared a graphic for this. If you don't happen to like Fresca's logo or branding, wait five minutes. <laughs> wow, look at that! Because these uh, are all. Yeah. How many do you remember? You know that uh, that oh, light. It's a beer. diabetic beverage. Well, yeah, it, <laughs> uh, that's that's a New Zealand uh, label, but yeah, it's sugar free. There has never been a sugared equivalent of Fresca. Interestingly enough. Uh, nice. Just other hazardous ke chemicals. <laughs> yeah, so that's uh, that's what we're all drinking. And the important thing is we are all first-hand witnesses to the 1970s, which is a superpower True. that Joe and Nick can't claim. So when uh, word got out that Joe was thinking about a spinoff 
of their classic show, Shattered a Morning Cartoons. Heard of uh, I went straight to him and I said, you know what you need to do? You need to do the most bonkers and berserk era of children's television. You need to do the live action shows of the 1970s. And he said, okay, well, you can do it then. And I said, oh, shit. But, but here we are. And we're going to have uh, loads of fun. And I guess that's the whole setup. We should uh, go back in time and, and start watching the actual show. Right? Well, I should say, Tim, that this is part us revisiting that. But it's also, yeah. I view this as a kind of a group therapy to process uh, the imagery Was that we saw. actually there? Yeah, there's, <laughs> we were actually there. There's a lot to work through. Yeah, uh, actually, we've carried, we've carried the trauma. On my side, there's a whole lot to work through. <laughs> yeah, you've, uh, you've done the most work. I've that. never let it go. Oh, one thing I forgot. I do want to begin <laughs> with um, a quick shot to the neck of 70s nostalgia to get us in the mood. So let's just see who remembers this. That's oh, the name, oh. Jim. They may look insane, Jim. This is KISS, each sold separately, and you can put them in any crazy pose you want. That's the name, KISS. They may look insane, KISS. If rocks your game, it's KISS. KISS, each 12 and a half inch figure sold separately by Mego. That jar any memories loose? Oh, yeah. Uh, rock is my game. Yeah. Well, After there... that came out. <laughs> well, I think go. I'm going to uh, say nationally that I'm not interested in Kiss anymore. When I was 10, they were awesome. Right. But no, forget. I'm done. Wait, wait a second. You're making it sound like you can outgrow Kiss. I mean, come on. Watch me. <laughs> but I do like this play date, though. Uh, two boys, two girls, and, and the entire Kiss Star Wars and all and, lineup. And Jaws were like all the same thing to me. They were all like these icons. Uh, I drew Kiss all the time. Yeah. I would draw Kiss in a spaceship looking down at Jaws. Oh, <laughs> Jaws came up out of the water. That's so awesome. like, Kiss would have a cool looking spaceship though. And, uh, I mean, I drew Kiss too. I, I get it. Kiss, did you, you know, draw right? Kiss? I mean, I think that was just what you did. That was your rite of passage. Yeah, I was a nerdier kid than this. I right. wasn't into any sports. And uh, I will say this. I never bought a Kiss product or, or an album or anything. But when you were a kid, in the, at least a boy in the 70s, if Kiss was on TV, you could not look away. I give them credit. It was like... Right, right. And, of course, they had the oh Phantom boy. of the Park. Well, we I, had I had dinner with him. It was very exciting. <laughs> with the Phantom of the Park? Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. With, yes. With, that The mad scientist. Yeah. I think his name is uh, Anthony Zerby. Anthony oh, yeah. Zerby. Yeah, totally. he's, he's awesome. Oh, he's wow. so cool. Cooler than Kiss. Yeah, I think so. Yes. I, I don't think the character had the right idea building a robot kiss army, though. Um, let me get rid of this thing. I think there's another episode. We can talk. We can go and process. We can go oh, we should watch kiss. that. We should do a primetime <laughs> special where we watch Phantom of the Park. That would be great. Oh, yeah. Uh, that would be really good. Yeah, Someone, but you, did you notice uh, that wasn't even do kiss? all the effects of that show. Did, yeah. did you notice that wasn't even Kiss performing in their own commercial for their own product? Yeah. That's what a dark age it was of cross branding. <laughs> like the Star Wars action figure ads had generic marching adventure music and uh, and stuff like that. But anyway, this episode we're going back to the uh, the hazy, crazy days of fall 1976. When ABC debuted uh, a new lineup for their Fun Shine Saturday block, uh, and I'm drawing your attention to the upper right here. This must be the uh, Central or Mountain Time Zone because on the East Coast it was 10:30 a.m. that you saw the Croft Super Show. This was a 90-minute block of whatever the Crofts could cram in there. You see, of course, Wonder Bug the sentient automobile show very hard science fiction we'll be seeing that uh, soon enough dr shrinker electro woman and dina girl today in today's educational unit we are going to be covering the framing devices the uh the wraparound hosts for the show glam rock band captain cool and the kongs and we're going to try and figure out uh, how we ever grew up after seeing this. Uh, one last thing I'll what call your attention to. There? This is just ABC's lineup. So you could watch Dino Mutt 
And you could also watch Dinah Girl without even changing the channel on the same morning. That's kind of a clue to how we named this show. But there'll be some future show will have the educational unit on uh, <clears throat> on exactly how uh, on the, the nature of the prefix Dinah and how uh, how it came to define our show. Uh, let's see. So let me find the right uh, video here. So uh, we're all in our footy pajamas. It's 1976. I'm about to show the opening credits to the Croft Super Show. I'll probably play like a portion of the credits and then I'll hit pause and then we can just sort of discuss gotcha. what we've seen and what feelings it put into us. But let, let me uh, age uh, myself a little. So who saw this when it actually aired? Me. I, I have dim memories of seeing... Not, uh, not in syndication, mind you, but... No, like, no, no. Actually, yeah. Fall, yeah. 1976. I remember see, vaguely seeing the preview show where they promoted this yeah. whole big preview show that, with sure. this band is going to be on it. And I was a suburban kid. I didn't know a thing about the glam rock scene. My best guess on seeing the Kongs was to like tilt my head like a dog and go, is this because Kiss is popular? I think that was my initial reaction to uh, right, all right. of Kongdom. So uh, let's watch a, a little bit of the opening theme right now. Okay. Let's process this. Um, <laughs> let me go back a little bit. This is the first human face they've given us to look at. <clears throat> on a Saturday morning cartoon show. It's not cartoon. It's it's a Saturday morning show. This is the this is our gateway into Captain Cool and the Kongs and the Croft Super Show. Any reactions? As a kid, this is where you're getting on or getting off the ride. This is where you're gonna <laughs> be like, well, I, I guess we could admire like, no, we're that. we're letting you know right now. In like, or this out this is where kid. we are. Yeah. Yeah, in or out. Well, in we're or stuck out. with it. Okay, I let's see. I stuck with it. Back then, though, you, it wasn't just a remote. You had to, like, go up and, you, to, you know, clink, clink. So I think enough. everybody got a little Is bit Is this longer. horrific enough for you not to get up? Yeah, it's, yeah it's that so was the plan. Not. We don't want them to change the channel. We better scare them away. We won't want to get them. We don't want them to get three feet from the screen. Yeah, this wasn't the, uh, the swipe left. Of the <laughs> yeah. Thing. All right, let's see if we can uh, do the whole thing here. Uh I mean, don't get left behind. <laughs> Take a trip with us today. We will lead you to a land of dreams. Broadcast some super shows. They will blow your mind away. When you join us, you'll know why we say it's just a crazy. Well, there you go. And that crazy land is Atlanta. Yes. Um, right. There's a whole lot to That's unpack that. Now, on a recent episode of Saturday Morning Cartoons, uh, George Passless uh, let it slip that Sid and Marty Croft opened an indoor theme park based on theme park, yeah. all their lands exactly. and all their shows in Atlanta, Georgia, part of the the big Omni Hotel complex. And he also mentioned that's where CNN is located now. Or was located up until a few months ago. Yeah, just a few months. Okay. Well, um, I did. Hang on. Let me get this up here. This is the widest angle shot. This is what we're looking at is the four levels of the theme park as people entered. And I just want people to know it's not like they gutted the building and then refit it for television production because this is a more uh, recent view of when it was uh, the CNN Center. And if we overlay, you see, they didn't, ar exactly. architecturally, oh, they didn't change a thing. Oh, no, it's exactly the same. It's yeah. exactly the same. And uh, that structure there on the right, that diagonal structure is the world's longest freestanding escalator, which was, uh, you know, one of the uh, attractions of the building. And let me get rid of As this. you go into the attraction, they're like, 
Well, you there? The top. You're like, uh, did I just pay for an escalator ride? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, it cost fifteen dollars, I think, to get the CNN tour. Fifteen dollars, please. <laughs> All right. Anyway, it was at the top of that escalator where we saw this introduction to the Kongs. Thanks. It's me, Captain Cool, and the Kongs. Super chick. Turkey. Nashville. And Flatbush. <laughs> and the how do you show on earth? Croft Super Shows. Starring. And then they go and just start telling us about the other shows. Like eight-year-old me is going, wait a minute. You can't just show up dressed no. like that. Give us your names that aren't human being names. And then cut and then go on with the rest of the show. We need more context. That was kind of my feeling. You get no context. <laughs> yeah. You, it was the same you know, Marty Croft? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, you're breaking up, Roy. Oh no. Anyway, um, there, there. I, like I said, there's so much to unpack. I even did the research on on this shot. Uh, this is on the outskirts of Atlanta. They are, uh, they are walking westbound on the Freedom Parkway, now known as the John Lewis Freedom Parkway. They are actually they're at least a mile from the Omni Center, so. The adults are going to be walking for half an hour, never mind the kids. And if they're in platform right. shoes, that is going to be an agonizing uh, ride. But this was early exposure for this stretch of road. It later parlayed th that into a TV career in other Atlanta-based shows like The Walking Dead. The Walking Dead. Yes. yes. Uh, some people say that ah, that could be any road. But skylines no. do not lie. You got to no. give me That's that. Eerily similar. They, it's uh, pretty much exactly the same. I think we're a little further back in this shot uh, with the more lanes, but uh, I had to show that off because I did the research. Very prophetic. Very prophetic. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, I don't know what your experience is, what your reactions to the Kongs are at this time. Uh, I decided I had to go deep and figure out exactly who these people are. So I... Um, went to the FBI, and under the Freedom of Information Act, I demanded <laughs> access to the cool files. Uh, we're going to learn a lot more about them in this unit. We we start off oh. with uh, with Captain Cool himself. He's the ringleader of the operation. And uh, some people know him more from uh, as Max on One Day at a Time. Uh, and he hasn't been on camera in a long time. He's done a lot of directing. Uh, I think some Friends episodes and the occasional feature film um super chick actually brought some rock cred into the group she uh she and her sisters were in an early all-girl rock band called either the clingers or the clingers sisters uh and her last imdb credit is 1982 so her current whereabouts are a complete mystery um also bringing some rock experience was uh turkey he actually drummed for Three Dog Night. <laughs> Seriously, and, um, wow! Yeah, it was he knew his stuff. He wow. knew how to drum. I don't know to what extent that's them in the theme song, but uh, there you go. And he actually appeared on a WKRP episode and in the Steven Seagal film Hard to Kill, where I think he had one line. Oh, wow, was he? Easy I don't to kill know if uh, if they tried to kill him or not. But uh, so there is life after the Kongs in some cases. Uh, Nashville uh, was a little hard to figure out. She is a uh, comedian impressionist, Louise Duarte. She uh, done a lot of celebrity impress, the, the usual ones, the the Barbara Streisand, the Joan Rivers, everything typical from the uh, stand up explosion. And she moved on to cartoon voices. So as far as I know, she's she's still working. I believe she's been heard on Saturday morning cartoons. She has enough cred there. And, and the saddest story has got to be uh, Flatbush, who came to the show as a, an actual performer at Woodstock. By all accounts, he did really well. I, I, he didn't end up on either of the albums, though, because uh, they say of record company politics. And uh, he checked out in 1990. Oh. So it was a shorter, oh, shorter road for poor old Flatbush. I... Don't know which was more ignominious. Does he haunt going. the CNN Center? What now? 
Does he haunt the CNN center? You think that might be? Yeah, <laughs> if you, they say at midnight. At the if you watch CNN at the, the stroke of, of midnight on Halloween, Flatbush, the ghost of Flatbush wafts through. Uh, that's everything. That's a I was show able to find out there. Um, but the question is, can they sing? Uh, and the answer is, for forty-five seconds at a time, yes. Uh, I got this. Uh, here's one of the songs that they would do as an interstitial between the actual story program. There. What's everyone think? That's longer than I remember them ever singing, and it seems like it's okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I, have, um, I have to say, it's like there's a whole Jesus Christ superstar, God's <laughs> oh, Ooh, hang on. Let's sort of like here. cabal of just everything just clumped into one during that time period. So it all seems like the same thing to me. <laughs> yeah, well, they, they seem to have a pretty solid musical foundation on the show in general, because a lot of the theme songs to the shows on the Super Show and the, the songs performed by Captain Cool and the Kongs were provided by the Osmond family. Uh, there were uh, very close very close ties between uh, House Croft and House Osmond. Sid and Marty Croft produced the Donnie and Marie show and uh, yes. many, other, many other quid pro quos going back and forth. So this was uh, almost wow. a showcase for the Osmonds. Songwriting, at least. I don't know how much they helped on the performing Right. It didn't. I didn't hear any female voices during the theme song, so that might just uh, come straight from Utah. I don't really know. Uh, <laughs> but oh, and the one thing I I wanted to point Let's out. Go to Utah. Let me uh, see if I can get this up here. Uh, there's a shot of Turkey, and he's wearing these big Elton John glasses, which match the eye makeup. That he's seeing. Uh, oh no, it's I can't show yeah, they, that. They did that because they didn't have the glasses earlier on, so they just painted them on, and then it maybe seems like a on. weird way to react to the absence <laughs> of uh, of the glasses. But I could be <laughs> yeah, anything like, would. Was off. Yeah, but anyway, it wasn't just music from the Kongs. Oh boy, they also oh, did no. comedy. Uh, let's get a load of some of that side splitting uh, comedy. That uh, they always. What mouth watering fiddles would you like to order today, folks? Wait a minute. What are we supposed to eat with? Well, I'll be balked and dropped. I plain forgot. Coming up. <laughs> Stuff to eat with. Plates in the middle. Nice food on the right. Folks on the left. Hey, hey, go ahead. That's your job. Not the kind of money they pay me, it ain't. Yeah! <laughs> Just uh, bring us two glasses of water and then we'll order. Coming up. <laughs> two glasses of water. This pitcher is empty for empty. There's no water in here. Sure is. It's instant water. All you have to do is add water. <laughs> if you're just joining us, Captain Cool and Super Chick are receiving poor restaurant service. <laughs> Just to get you up to speed. <laughs> What's this? Oh, that's Your that's bill. That. And don't forget my tip. Oh, wait a minute. We haven't even ordered yet. That's right. Would you like to order now? Yes, we'd like to order now. <laughs> Sorry, we just closed. <laughs> The restaurant sketch, ladies and gentlemen. The the restaurant sketch. Now, if that wasn't your cup of tea, if that wasn't um, side splitting comedy to you, at least we know who to blame, because uh, in the credits they actually have a comedy consultant named Harvey Lembeck. 
freaking hard. And uh, if that name sounds familiar, that might be because Captain Cool was played by Michael Lembeck, whose father is Harvey uh, Lembeck. Mm. And this is not the last Lembeck who will turn up in, in Super Show history. Uh, Harvey, I don't know. He did some acting. He did some uh, writing. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> like, did they hire him to consult on the comedy? And he said... Um, have them eat at a restaurant and the service is bad. I, I just don't know. It's uh, <laughs> it's gonna be kids. I love mean, that it's stuff. on par with like all the other Sid and Marty Cross stuff. Like I guess so. That on. and and laugh in. No, it's not really up to laugh in caliber either. If you really really yeah. think oh, about not it. at all. Uh, anyway, there there is more to cover in uh, Kong history, but that takes us to the end of season one. So I think it's a good time for a commercial break. What do you say, Skip? Yes. Uh, yes. I, com I compiled Please. a bunch of 70s commercials for you. Very uh, good. Some of them will uh, amaze you. Some of them will terrify you. Okay. Nice. It's up to me to click on them, I think. Uh, yeah. I think yeah. So. Okay. Here we go. Some of those great 70s Excellent commercials. Terrifying commercials. Come to the honeycomb hideout. Yeah. Gonna eat and gonna play. Having breakfast in the honeycomb hideout. What a way to start the day. A good breakfast in the honeycomb hideout. What a way to start the day. I got a snowball game. In honeycomb, there's yeah. a skill ball game. Part of the post cereals <laughs> carnival of skills. Play a game of skill ball. Inside each special mark box of honeycomb. I yeah. should say, I'm going to say, like, the fact that you have this guy talking about the plastic skill ball game. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, baby. It's like a member of Dr. Hook in the medicine show. Know, exactly. Unbelievable, man. It's this skill ball game. You get 100 points <laughs> if you get it yeah, in the man, middle. Gonna really, My mind is gonna, blown. You're going to trip yeah, out, I have another man. commercial I'm looking for, which they're singing about a rubber ball that comes in. It. Oh, it's, boy. It's absolutely they dropped the... Uh, the park dealer uh, character, I guess, from Honey. <laughs> <laughs> He'll show up again. Don't worry. Yeah. The... Oh, okay. All right, here we go. There's a penny, Mickey. <gasps> oh, yeah. Thanks for the gumball. Show me a gumball for a penny puzzle. <laughs> That's what you're drinking, Skip. Ready for the gumball. Bye bye. Thanks for the gumball. Gumball banks. Get gumball refills and fill up Mickey Mouse. Popeye or Bozo. See the gumballs go down. Watch the pennies go up. What are you going to do with all your pennies, Popeye? Fire rock gumballs. Gumball banks from Hasbro. Wow. Did you guys have those? Uh, didn't yes. have one. Uh, oh, you did? Which one? I had a Mickey Mouse. And this is like terribly cute commercial. Terribly cute. Yeah, well, at the end when they I say, "Hey," the I, commercial. at the end they point out, "Hey, now you got all these pennies. Now you can buy more gumballs." Exactly. And, and yeah. dumb kids, dumb kids are going, "My God, this could go on forever." Because <laughs> that's the idea. Is like when I got it, I was like, <laughs> "Wow, this is great! I get all these gumballs, and then I can save money." But it's like, no, the gumballs cost more than the amount of money that you spent on the gumballs. So there's no on the gumballs. Yeah. Even if they didn't, there's never any get back. Even if they didn't, you still have to get more money every time you want gumballs. Yep. Right. Exactly. I wonder how many kids were like, "Oh, I don't have to put this in that head. I can just you can just eat the gumballs." <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, <laughs> cut out the middle. Get the gumball middleman. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Mm. And here is G.I. Joe with Kung Fu Grip. Ah. G.I. Joe has hands that grip. Fingers you hold open and let close. Hands that hold on with a <laughs> Kung Fu Grip. The grip you help Joe use in self-defense. G.I. Joe with Kung Fu Grip. The hands that grip. So mm -hmm. for you youngins, um, uh, G.I. Yeah. Joe used to be like 12 inches tall. Yep. And, uh, Eddie Murphy had a joke. I know I'd be mad if they cut me from 12 inches down to two. <laughs> right, right. Uh, he And he also did adventures. He wasn't a soldier uh, during mm. when I was collecting them. So. More Corps right. of Engineers kind of thing. Oh, here we go. Tootopolis is under constant siege by the Cavity Creeps. We make Crossing Team. Crest Team? The Cavity Creeps are coming. We'll fight them with Crest Fluoride. Arrgh! Crest! Yay! Crest! What's 
streets, see your dentist, and fight the cavity creeps like the crest team. Fight cavities with crest. That's a classic. Oh, Three new oh potato pals. Mr. Potato Bird, Mr. Potato Fish, and Mr. Potato Bug. That's a funny potato bug. I'm putting the <laughs> antenna on it. That's a nice potato fish. It's got Whoa. a tail. I like your potato bird. The wings are purple. Let's see them. Mr. Potato Bird. Mr. Potato Bug. Mr. Potato Fish. Mr. Potato Hen and his pals. <laughs> wow. Well, I'm sorry, uh, and you're welcome. You never want to have a... <laughs> yeah, yeah. He really yeah, I, changed. I don't like you. He really changed between then and the Toy Story movies, you know? <laughs> got more of an attitude in the movies, but... Uh, he got wise. Yeah, you, you all know that uh, <laughs> Mr. Potato Head originally didn't come with the plastic potato. Yeah. He was he supposed to use a potato. real potato. Yep. And I think it was... R actual I potato. think it was also the first toy ever advertised on TV. That's... Oh, that's uh, I wasn't around when that happened, but that's what I heard. So uh, that's something right there. Yeah, that's uh, that must have been something to see. But uh, anyway, thanks. Great job, Skip. Uh, I guess we got to get back to the Kong narrative. Honey, uh, there's a but there's a potato on TV. <laughs> yeah, and he's good, uh, guys. He's good. Come, there's a potato. <laughs> on, oh, holy shit! We have potatoes at home. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so that being the commercial break, we this brings us to uh, season two of the Super Show, and season two brought some changes. I think Sid and Marty over the summer figured out that Glamrock peaked maybe 1973, and they overshot uh, the bar on that. So not only did they pull back a little on the flamboyance of the outfits, but also Flatbush just disappeared into the night. I think he, he may have gotten a better offer from something that was less uh, puppet adjacent. But uh, my, my question was, like, what was his point? Because you have Captain Cool, who is cool. And then mm -hmm. you have Turkey, who is obviously the comic relief. Like, what, what is right. Flatbush providing? Uh, uh, yeah, There's a mall at the intersection of him and Atlantic Avenue. That's all I can tell you as a Brooklyner. <laughs> And the and the Barkley Center. There's a stadium there too. That's that's all I know. But yeah, I guess he was. Uh, Did you feel like he was representing Brooklyn? <sighs> Maybe, yeah. Uh, I mean, his his outfit was very pimp like, so I think they were trying to go for something okay. urban but safe. I I don't know 1976 programming logic, but it was all very muddled and confusing. Anyway, the uh, the op just the opening credits in the season two uh, super show. Just show a lot of changes. They're they're focusing on the shows instead of the band, first of all. Bigfoot and Wild Boy. Wonderbug was the only one that carried over from season one. There are the cons. Same song, and well, you can, it's a little blurry copy, but you can kind of see that the outfits are a little more standardized at least. And uh, they get yeah. they get straight into They're the much cooler, yeah, maybe for, for 1978 or now it's 1977, actually. Uh, but let's let's yeah, see if uh, Harvey Lembeck has gotten the comedy uh, any improvement here. Well, gather up, let's start the show. Turkey, put that letter away, but Captain, this is from my nephew. Oh, yeah. He's so cute. He looks just like me. Hey, wait a minute now. Let me get this straight. Either he's cute, yeah, or he looks like you. <laughs> okay, kids. Today we're going to learn how to stuff a turkey. First, you need some sausage, some bread, 
some spices, then you stop your turkey. Do, do you get the feeling Nashville was trained on the stage? And and nobody nobody told her, you know, the camera picks up everything. There's no <laughs> there's no back row you have to play to. Like, like it, it's the second season right, and right. nobody's tipped her off to that. That's that's what gets me. Or she hasn't watched the show yeah, or so. Yeah, I think that's the <laughs> Did you hear about Turkey? He finally got his driver's license. You're kidding. Do you think he'll take you for a ride? Well, here he comes now. We'll soon see. Hold it. You want to live super cheap? Yeah, yeah, great, Nashville. That's, uh... <laughs> And the Emmy goes to <laughs> exactly. Uh, maybe in silent movies, Nashville would have been hilarious. Uh, oh boy! Yes. So that's how it was in in the second season, and there officially there were only uh, two seasons of the Super Show, but it refused to die. It kept mutating. It changed into the Croft Superstar Hour, featuring the Bay City Rollers. Oh yeah, I uh, but that. yeah, and then they that changed into the Bay City Rollers show. But the Kongs would occasionally appear. It was like Sid and, Sid and Marty oh, had wow. invested so much in this band and they needed it to be a hit is the feeling you get from how long. Like they appeared on, I have a, a graphic here. They appeared on every uh, Croft produced show uh, in the world. They're, this is them on Donnie and Marie. Wow. Uh, they appeared on the Brady Bunch Hour. And this is a transitional stage for, for the Kongs, you can see, because Super Chick is in her season one outfit, but Flatbush is not there. So this is, uh, that's early 1977. Yeah. They appeared on the Bay City Rollers Meet the Saturday Superstars, which was a preview show for the upcoming Saturday right. lineup. They appeared on the Croft Superstar Hour, everything. Uh, the I, I only found two non-Croft shows they appeared on, which was... Uh, American Bandstand and the Jerry Lewis Telethon. There may have wow. been more. Oh, and wow. Uh, wow. just to uh, just to show you what kind of pressure they were under from the Crofts, I found this ad for an ABC All Star Thanksgiving festival. And if you look at the bottom, three and a half hours. Three of and a half fun. hours. Oh my gosh. I hope they I'm added a lot work. more beats. They must have added a lot of beats to that restaurant sketch. Like Man. that restaurant sketch would have to be 20 minutes to pad this out. But I guess they, they had the other stuff, Bigfoot and, and Wild Boy. And maybe uh, this is them running out their contract that Thanksgiving. Yeah. yeah, I guess they, they want to get everything they can. And in the process, amidst all this, two different records uh, by the Kongs came out, at least uh, nominally. This, you have a copy of this, right? Skip? I couldn't find it, but yes. Uh, and yeah. some of those gags in the second season. Uh, are on the record. Oh, my. Yeah, oh wow. Great. Yeah, this is stories from the Croft Super Show, and there's a little bit of Kong content, but they get the entire cover. And they don't sing at all unless they sang on the little snippet of the theme song that's on the record. So the whole thing is messed. Th but this is, you can see in the corner, it's from Peter Pan Records. It was a product for kids. There was also, released by Epic Records... Uh, a We Are a Real uh, Band record. Wow. And this one, they seem wow. to be going, at, they seem to be reaching for ABBA instead of Kiss with the white outfits, the two men, two women. Uh, and also, if you if you Smart. listen to the album, it's very disco. Hmm. They like they just threw away everything that, uh, that Flatbush brought into the band. Is it, look, wow. we're just a disco band. Two or three tracks that are, feel a little light rocky, but uh, but it, do you think they sold records? I, I have no I, no sales figures on this, but I've never seen it in anyone's collection. Were teenagers supposed to buy it? I, I guess they're saying like, let's aim a little older. It looks it looks like that's what they're saying. Let's aim a little older than the some kid at some Kmart. <laughs> God, yeah, well, it's. Competent disco to my ear. I'm and no they were sad that there were no jokes on it. 
They were like, oh, <laughs> yeah. like, what the hell? Where, Where are, are the those skits? turkey jokes? I just, oh. I need the skit. was hoping turkey would crack me up. So <laughs> it's impossible to really say exactly when the twilight of Captain Cool and the Kongs was. It would have been one of these throwaway skits on the Bay City Rollers show that was uh, their last appearance, wow. you know? And so it's impossible to say. But that is the story of Captain Cool and the Kongs. Uh, did we enjoy it? Did we learn anything? Do we have any opinion? I think... I gotta say... Go ahead, Roy. Uh, I remember this stuff, and uh, I must have had high tolerance for the uh, the Wonder Bugs and the uh, Bigfoots. No. Uh, big feet? Big feet? Um, oh, I, I don't think there's an official one. I, I, I write trivia questions sometimes, and I know I, I, I handled that once. Like, I, I, I just asked, what is the one that they use on that Bigfoot hunting show? And I think they say Big Feet. Big, foot, big Feet, okay. Hmm. Yeah, well, I was there for all that. Yeah, me, me too. Still am. I gotta say, I still am. Okay. Not the highest rung of Sid and Marty Croft, but like good starter kit stuff. Uh, I did enjoy it. I guess they sound a little like a real band. Uh, and it makes a little more sense to me. But eight-year-old me is still tilting his head, you know, like a deer in headlights. Uh, well, and I guess the thing is, if you think about it, like, all those shows made for kids had bands in them. Mm -hmm. Like, there was a band. Well, like, a lot of right. them did, yeah. yeah. Um, and um, so this, I think, is towards the end when bands started fading away from Saturday morning, but yeah, there was I, a lot of them. Yeah, they were probably they probably started getting too expensive. Uh, this is, cable was starting to grow, and you needed a, a lower budget. It felt like live action itself was was trickling away, waiting for Pee Wee to bring it back. Right, that's right. The part of what and, was going and I on. think that, like, if I had to guess, I would say the Monkees and uh, Partridge Family were the ones that that created that wake. That all these yeah. other mm. shows were trying. I would to also uh, throw in the Archies, yes, being the, yes. the first 100%. original successful cartoon. Yes, yeah, all all those guys yeah. who had records on the back of cereal boxes. Yeah, yeah they need well, to bring that back. Yeah, they could. Uh, well, they pack CDs in them sometimes, or they used to. Yeah, yeah, AOL CDs. later. Well, anyway, uh, who feels like a seventies themed quiz? Let me get okay. some more caffeine. Right. Gonna get, okay, we we are waiting for Skip to get some All more right. caffeine. Okay, well, I came up with a, a 70s themed quiz, uh, and here's how this is going to go. I am going to read off and show you a, uh, a goofy sounding or nonsensical word or phrase. And you have to tell me, <laughs> is, it a is it a 1970s snack food? Or a 1990s band. Okay. Okay. Ooh, boy. Mm. Uh, boy, they, I'm gonna let you go first. They, uh, well, okay. uh, no, right. there's no scoring process. Or okay. Just, All right. All right. Tell us as they come up. Uh, they, they don't have to be exclusive to their decade. They just have to have had something for sale in that decade. Okay. Uh, and that's about it. And that's uh, this is a little game that I like to call "Shit." The screaming yellow zonkers broke up. And uh, <laughs> we'll say it was like Cracker Jack, but uh, more butter. Yeah, my, my uh, stepmother had to get oh, dental work yellow. because she uh, had a screaming yellow oh. crack a crown. Oh, so, dear. Wow. Well, yeah. Maybe that's why it's off the market. That's unpleasant. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. We'll start off uh, fairly easy, I think. Astro Pop? That's a real thing. That's that's a real but thing. a real what? A real, it's, a, uh, it's a candy. Pop. It's a. Yeah, so a snack. So yes. like, yes, okay, I think you got it. Yes. Both flavored, so. triangular. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Roy, would you tuck that down to a point and then stab your uh, siblings with it? Yes, it is also. They, a they actually got uh, they actually got sued because one kid poked himself in the back of the throat uh, with a sharpened one, uh, but it was actually invented oh, by rocket so scientists. <laughs> uh, anyway, yes. Moving on, we will go. Goo Goo Dolls. Oh, nice. 90s band. It is a 90s band. Very good. You were not confused by the Goo Goo Cluster, as right. I was worried you would be. That's uh, that's they very good. The they do. They do. That's what I've heard. They yeah. Music critics say they taste just like uh, just Goo like Goo Clusters. Cluster. 
Uh, moving on, we got Powderfinger. Uh, huh. That could be like the Lick'em Sticks. Hmm. It seems like a, a generic Lick'em Stick. Is that your guess? I yes. think it's a band. Okay, we have a split. Oh, a split. Uh, and it turns out Skip gets it. This is an Australian band. Uh, however, I'm on the exact same page as you that if Licka Made Fun Dip ever needs a new name, I nominate Powderfinger. It needs to be the Powderfinger. Yeah, yeah, because nice. kids would eat the stick, the dipping stick, before they were done with the powder. So then they were just dipping their fingers in the powder. Yeah, that would happen. Sometimes there, there was a three pack that also came with two sticks, I remember. So ah. it was less of a problem. Oh, you were, were you rich? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember the price. Did you have a paper route? Might have come in a Christmas <laughs> stocking. I don't know. Uh, move, <laughs> next, we move on to troglodytes. Mm. That, that is a band. I think that's a candy. Okay, another split. Oh, oh, like, like yeah. there to I swear to God, I remember these, okay? I never saw them in the field, but I saw the commercial. It was a disc of chocolate that comes in one of these... Uh, it's sort of like a pop-up book thing, and I guess the idea was you would collect them, but uh, it, it, of course, never caught on. It never happened, but I, I swear I saw a commercial I for these. That's UK thing. It might be. It might, it might have been uh, wow. something the UK was trying to export. I'll never know, but uh, occasionally you can find pictures of the troglodyte packaging. I don't even know what the disc looked like. So I had a friend that oh, was my. in a band called the Choclo Dykes. No. Yeah, so that's why nice. I was like, yeah, that's yeah. That's a better name for a candy. Yeah. <laughs> that would work. Yeah, that works as a band or a candy. Uh but what about this one? Sugar Mama. Ooh. Mm. Hmm. Frick it. I'm gonna say band. Uh, me to say too. Band. I think I, I agree. Band. Oh, how soon we forget a sugar mama. Was a chocolatey covered sugar daddy. Ah, see, that's what I was thinking. I was like, they're sugar daddy. Yeah. They took it one step further with chocolate. Oh, my. Yeah, well, how else are you going to make sugar babies if you don't have a sugar daddy and a sugar mama? Sugar mama, see? that's true. Well, well let me uh, tell you, with science. Ah, we're losing you again. I just said, with science, Tim. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> But uh, as you can see from the wrapper, it was not real chocolate. Uh, it was chocolatey. Uh, the the FDA said, no, you can't call that stuff chocolate. And I don't know how the law works, but that's uh, that goes. Okay, well, we got one wrong. We both got one wrong. But uh, see if you can come back with this one. Mr. Wonderful's Surprise. I'm not that's Stranger that. Danger right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it's a band. Uh, yeah, I'll go with band. Band, Skip. band. Okay, Mr. Wonderful's surprise was the worst cereal ever. Oh, this oh no! Was, this was one. <laughs> parents protested this during the test marketing phase unsuccessfully. It went national anyway. But these were little grainy hollow spheres with what's been described as frosting inside them. Wow. And uh, like a coalition of parents, consumer groups, wow. dentists, pediatricians. Uh, I think 125 of them signed a petition saying, please take this off the market. But they went <laughs> national anyway. And uh, like this wasn't harmful enough for children. They misspelled two words on the yeah. packaging. How as the final insult, you know, it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I guess I well they didn't want it to be like chocolatey they didn't want it to be confused with actual wonderful like they, there's oh you know, maybe the yeah. Federal Trade Commission would say well that's not really wonderful a little nor, nor is it a surprise right yeah the, they could be put a little asterisk yeah, like, like on full, the from like dehydrated full. wonderful surprises I guess so but that is uh, that is one yeah. of the actual that's one of the crazy craziest stories from seventies marketing is Mister Wonderful's surprise I don't remember it. I remember I've seen it come back in the internet age, but uh, wow. okay. So uh, you're down two, I guess, both of you. And, wow. uh, let's so see how you do with this one. Super oh, chunk. That's a that's a band. 
Yeah, I know people in that band. So you yeah. do. Oh boy. <laughs> well, you would be oh, right either man. way. You would be right either Booyah. way because the chunky version of Skippy Peanut Butter is super chunk. But yes, that's the real band behind them, and uh, the drummer John Worcester is an excellent comedian. And uh, uh, I wonder okay. if they're named after the peanut butter. You think? I wonder if they were called Chunk. So I know this because I was not the lead. Singer. I was here in college during when they came out. Uh -huh. And they called themselves Chunk initially, but there was another band called Chunk, so they changed mm. it their name to Super Chunk. So, That's cool. There you go. All right, and let's see what's left. Uh, we did Sugar Mama. What about Daddy Crisp? I don't know anymore, man. Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's sure. the effect. It's, it's, it's a candy bar. That's the effect I love hand having on people. Is uh, I don't, I don't know. Just, just make it stop. I'm going to say it's a band again. A band. Okay, well... Uh, brace yourselves. Any bar. Brace yourselves for this. Oh, it's a, it's a, it's a snack. Boys, devils, Those potato chips named Daddy Crisp after you. Oh, well, you named Daddy Crisp after those <laughs> noisy potatoes. They're a lot noisier than you are, but you're both lovable. If you love your daddy, you love Daddy Chris. Potato chips. Wow. Yeah. Uh, uh, wow. wow. Like, so do we? Do we both get? <laughs> I I don't. Well, he wasn't. It was a, a band, guitar. but yeah, he was holding a guitar. So uh, yeah. maybe there's a band in it, but I I don't know how to unpack that. Um, the the. The chips for weird, sullen misogynists. I guess yeah. is the slogan there. Um, <laughs> I don't know. He's grabbing at her. I don't know how else to interpret that, but uh, that's how we play. Shit, the screaming yellow zonkers. All right. So here's the irony. You want to know the irony and why my brain? You have ruined my brain with your quiz. Okay. So I actually digitized that that commercial. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> for Duke University's ad ad collection. Cause I was, cause when I started wow. watching, I was like, "Wait a minute, I know this commercial," and I completely forgot that Daddy Crisp was a uh, misogynist uh, potato chip brand. Good job, but, yeah. You must see a lot of films if, if that one just. Yeah, got well, that was during there. a time when we did ten thousand of them, so my brain was Fresh. mush. <laughs> yeah, I know the feeling. And well, I think that's the you end. Had to watch it more than once, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's that's the end of all the content that we brought, I think. Uh, if we had George Passless here, he'd be able to tell us what we allegedly learned in this episode. Although this one would have been a real challenge for There's him. There's no learning here. There's no learning. There, 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 there shouldn't no, be. No. <laughs> there shouldn't be on Saturday morning, because there, there really wasn't until the 80s or so, when that became a uh, government Learning mandate. is for 80s babies. Learning is yes. for 80s babies. Exactly. I uh, guess unless, so. Unless you know. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I guess what that means is that's our first episode, and we're going to go back into the vaults and find some more insane, absolute ludicrous crap to break everybody's brain with. Um, but until we meet again, from all of us here at oh, the Dinah Squad, darn. Darn. That's the darn. end. That's the end. It's just a crazy world where anything goes down. Super Show. The Crop Super Show.